into our lead story. Today, the peak representative bodies for Tasmanian and Victorian farmers have joined forces to call for fair land access rules in the face of what they see as a rapid renewable energy development. We've been talking about renewables a lot lately, and that's because things are kind of heating up. The, pardon the pun. The Australian government wants 82% of our power sourced from renewables by 2030, and that's up from about 30, the 32% that we have now. A lot of that infrastructure is planned for rural and regional areas, which then need power lines to transport the power back to the cities. Power lines that will cross through hundreds of farms across Australia. It's pushed both TAS Farmers and the Victorian Farmers Federation to create what they describe as a list of good manners, the rules of engagement that companies, government bodies and farmers should stick to. That's among reports of bullying and standover tactics in, during negotiations. I spoke to Victorian Federa Farmers Federation President Emma Germano and TAS Farmers President Ian Saw this morning to find out what they were asking for. There's usually a bit of rivalry between Tassie and Victoria, but you two have united forces today. What's going on? Meg, look, we, look the Victorian Farmers Federation and Tass Farmers started collaborating over 12 months ago because we have very similar issues. There's different topography, there's similar economics, similar, similar commodities on farms, etc. It just seems silly that we're not um, collaborating where we can. And the issues of the farm access code, we're all both states. Um, Emma's got specific issues with uh, power lines, but in Tassie, it's power lines, it's water pipes, it's roads, it's rail, it's it, the whole lot which are affecting farmers, and that's why we've come to the Farm Access Code. Tell me then, what what is this Farm Access Code in a nutshell? It's a document that has been developed for farmers that shows what the farmers' obligations are, but also sets out quite clearly what a third party proponent, whether it's a government GBE or a mining company, what they have to do to access and whilst they're accessing farmers' land. Sadly, it just boils down to plain good manners. That's, that's what it boils down to in the end. But there are obligations. People forget that farmers may have been spraying a paddock or there might be biosecurity issues. There could be a cranky bull out in the paddock. So there needs to be a process that for those people that are going to access farmers' land, they have to make the right contact with the farmer and do the right things. Emma, we've had Ian on this show a few times explaining um, the renewable scene down here in Tasmania. What's going on in Victoria? What, what does it look like over there in terms of what farmers are experiencing? We're actually starting to see now, uh, you know, we were all so supportive of the movement to uh, renewable energy. Um, that's a great thing. You know, farmers are largely supportive, but we're actually starting to see... Uh, both the treatment of the farmers by those companies, um, also transmission line companies. Um, it's start, we're starting to get a bit of pushback now because it seems to have gone a little bit too far. We've got farmers who are kind of sick of the consultation fatigue but aren't really being consulted meaningfully. Uh, and one of the, there's a lot of farmers in Victoria right now who are saying that they want to lock the gates on transmission companies and renewable energy companies. So we actually just need some principles by which everybody should play, uh, which, um, as Ian said, is really just documenting what is good manners um, to treat farmers with respect on their land. It's not just about farmers, of course, but it's about making sure that we're sustainable in our food production um, because that affects every Australian when they go to the supermarket. So to be clear, it's not a document asking for no no renewables, no use of farmland in renewables. It's talking about the, the dealings between companies and the farmers. Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've gotten to the point now where we've seen farmers being treated, particularly in my state. I'm, I'm not sure how uh, how much your farmers here in Tassie have been bullied, but I understand that um, you know it, it's, it's been problematic and that's why we've come together. But farmers in my state are just um, sick of people waltzing onto the land, um, threatening things like compulsory acquisition and not actually engaging with those farmers in good faith right from the very outset, right from the first minute that you contact a farmer. What are the principles by which um, you should be engaging with, with farmers and landholders um, when you want to come onto their land to do to do anything, whether that's, as we've said, whether it's transmission, renewable facilities, uh, gas lines, uh, pipelines, water lines, all of that. Um, and we know that there's more and more competition um, in those sectors now and trying to get infrastructure built. 
So treating farmers with respect is going to get that infrastructure built um, far quicker than, than creating um, all of this resistance in the community um, on the back of bad manners and not understanding a farmer's livelihood, a farmer's home in many cases, and again, food production for every Australian. It's all uh, well and good to, to lay out these, uh, these rules of engagement, these good manners. What does it actually do, though? Obviously, this isn't a binding document. This is sort of a preferred list of things, I guess, that farmers would like. What happens next? Meg in Tasmania, Tas Farmers will be providing this document to all its members, and that will be that will be the go-to document. So that when a proponent asks to come onto the land, the the landowner will know what they can and can't do, and vice versa for the proponent. So this will be the go-to document. It doesn't. I've got to stress it doesn't supersede any of the legislative or other documents that are out there that the state government have produced. Uh, this augments those documents but it is a document that the farmers and the landowners will be able to understand and work with. We're also um, going to have uh, the, the advocacy job of actually seeing um, the principles of this code uh, adopted into various uh, bits of legislation in each of our states and indeed in federal um, legislation also. Uh, we've spoken with Andrew Dyer, the National Wind and Infrastructure Commissioner, who's been doing a report um, on this just without the review and the report in regards to how farmers are feeling on their land and people's attitudes towards renewables and infrastructure. Um, and he's also said that this is a really great start. Uh, we'd like to see that, that, that harmonised across the state. But in any case, um, and the nature of government will be that this is going to be um, impacting many different acts. And so it's really about saying to our policy makers, the decision makers and to the community, this is how farmers would like to be treated. This is why it's important that farmers are treated this way and seeing that adopted in various bits of legislation across the different states. Just adding on top of that, the, um, uh, the Dwyer report, I mean, in that report, 92% of respondents were dissatisfied with the extent to which project Develops, developers engage with the local community. So this is just isn't in Tasmania. It's not just in Victoria. It's Australia-wide. So um, this document hopefully will be that first stepping stone to making sure that farmers are treated with respect and not trampled. Well, that leads nicely to my next question. Are you planning to disseminate this document further? It's, it's clear that over the next... Well, five years, I guess six years until 2030, as we amp up our, our race to get renewable energy, it's going to happen more and more, this uh, consultation with regional communities, particularly farmers. Well, I, well absolutely. And look, the, um, the National Farmers Federation know about um, the work that um, VFF and TAS Farmers have done. Um, Emma and myself have both spoken to, you know, uh, Mr Glyer. Um, so... Our view is, um, and certainly National Farmers' view, is that there needs to be some harmonised uh, document that can go around Australia that allows the, the farmers, it gives them the strength and the opportunity to be able to talk at a living level playing field with those developers who want to access the land. The standout, of course, is renewables. I mean, that's just the standout at the moment, but there's a lot of other developments, be it mining, be it water pipes, be it gas, be it roads. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. They're all impacting on farms. And what we do know is that we're not making any more farmland. Ian Saw and Emma Germano there from Taz Farmers and the Victorian Farmers Federation. And the code of conduct that they're spruiking includes requirements for proponents to have a basic understanding of farms as workplaces. Interesting one there. And an agreement for proponents not to enter property without first locating the landholder.